the definite integral of a continuous function. This symbol right here is an integral sign. It's the integral from a to b. a and b are called the limits of integration. f of x is called the integrand. dx indicate, is a differential, and it indicates that the variable of integration is this x right here. We've built up all the machinery we need now to talk about what this definite integral is in a fairly precise mathematical way. It's equal to this limit. It's equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of this sum, sum i equals 1 to n of f of xi delta x. This is the sum that we've been constructing before. It's a right sum. It takes the function value at the right end point times the width of the interval. We're going to take the limit as n tends to infinity so that we get more and more terms in this sum as uh, n increases to infinity. Delta x is what we had before, b minus a over n, and xi is a plus i times delta x. Let's work out an example to compute one of these definite intervals. Let's compute the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. We need to identify what these pieces are. a will be 0 and b will be 1. So a is 0 and b is 1. So from that, we can compute out what delta x is. Delta x is b minus a over n. n is going to be a generic number that eventually will let 10 to infinity. So delta x is 1 over n. We can also, from this, compute what xi is. xi is the a value, which is 0, plus i times 1 over n. That just turns out to be i over n. So we know the xi. We know the delta x. f of x is the integrand. f of x is just going to be x squared. So we can put these pieces into our summation and then simplify our summation and take the limit. That's what we do next. The integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx, by this description, by this definition, is equal to limit as n tends to infinity, sum i equals 1 to n, of f of i over n times 1 over n. n for xi, we put i over n. n for delta x, we put 1 over n. Now we can put in the function. The function is x squared, so f of i over n is i over n squared. Now we have this limit of this sum, and the first thing to do is to simplify the sum. To simplify the sum, the first thing to do is to simplify the terms in the sum. And so we can combine the i, the n squared and the n. n squared times n is n cubed. We have an i squared in the numerator. And then the next thing we see is that since that n cubed doesn't have any i's in it, like we'd done earlier, we can factor the n cubed out, and we're just left with the sum i equals 1 to n of i squared to simplify. We can simplify that because we know a formula for it. We have a formula for i equals 1 to n of i squared. The formula is this, n cubed over 3 plus n squared over 2 plus n over 6. So substituting in that formula for that sum, this now just becomes an expression totally in terms of n, and we take the limit of it as n tends to infinity. Distributing through the 1 over n cubed, n cubed over n cubed cancels out. We get 1 over 3 n squared over n cubed gives us a 1 over n. n over n cubed cancels out to get 1 over 6 n squared. Take the limit. As n tends to infinity, that tends to 0, and that tends to 0. So we're just left with a third. A third is equal to the value of this integral. 0 to 1 of x squared dx is equal to 1 third. And remember, the whole thing that we set up here was to find the area of under the curve above the x-axis. So one-third is actually this blue area that we see right here. That's what this process does. It finds area under a curve for positive fu functions. This is what the definite integral of a continuous function means.